the impact of a historic ice storm, a Norman favorite is fighting flames and the start of early voting in Oklahoma. This is OU Nightly. Hello, thanks for joining us for OU Nightly. I'm Haley Wager. And I'm Autumn Wagner. Today marks the first day of early voting in Oklahoma. In Cleveland County, voters have been wrapped around the election board office all day. Long lines were reported at early voting places across Oklahoma. Here in Norman, voters were in the line before polls opened at 7 a.m. One voter we talked to says he waited in line for three hours to cast his ballot. Across Oklahoma, it is it is the same scene with so many voters passionate about this election. Early voting in Oklahoma will be held today till 6 p.m. Friday and Saturday. And OU Nightly's Mackenzie Gladney spent part of the day at the Cleveland County Election Board. She joins us now. Mackenzie, a busy day. I'm here at the Cleveland County Election Board where voters have been in line all day and that's as early as 5 a.m. Now early voting will occur in Oklahoma from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. today and tomorrow and then again on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Despite all the inclement weather we've seen here in Cleveland County, whether that be ice, snow, trees in the ground, none of that matters because voters are here to make their voice heard. The line is pretty long, but it's still moving. It starts at the front of the building, wraps to the side, wraps to the back, snakes inside the building so voters can get a break from the cold to back outside and then to the polling location. Some of the voters in line have expressed their concerns with standing in these long lines, and they believe that's largely due to the fact that Oklahoma only has early voting for two and a half days, where some states like Texas have early voting for three weeks. But that doesn't matter because voter, uh, voter, um, Voter enthusiasm is still high here in Norman. Now let's take a look at the numbers. The Oklahoma Election Board is reporting that almost 21,000 voters have casted their vote in person today. But in Cleveland County, we don't know how someone voted, but those who did vote are registered in this way. For Republican, 945, Libertarian, 7, Democrat, 706, and Independent, 216. Now again, guys, early voting will occur in Oklahoma from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. today and tomorrow, and then again on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Now, if you want to cast your vote here in Norman, you can do it right here at the County Election Board or at the Norman Moore Technology Campus on the South OKC location. And in Oklahoma, your employer by law is required to give you a two-hour break to vote on Election Day if needed. Reporting live, Mackenzie Gladney, OU Nightly. Thanks, Mackenzie. And as concerns over COVID-19 surround this year's election, one company is trying to make things safer. Across the country, Anheuser-Busch has donated hundreds of gallons of hand sanitizer to organizations, and Oklahoma's election board is the latest. In conjunction with the Oklahoma Beer Alliance, Anheuser-Busch is providing nearly 500 gallons of sanitizer to be used by polling stations. When the election cycle started, you know, gearing up, they decided it'd just be a good idea to maybe do this as a na national effort. So they have done this clear across the country. Oklahomans can feel more assured about their safety heading to the polls this week as early voting in around the state begins Thursday, October 29th, and the general election taking place Tuesday, November 3rd. And political yard signs can be an effective way to show your support for a candidate. But there has been an increase in these signs being stolen off people's property. OU Nightly's Taylor Todd continues our team coverage on the election. Taylor? Signs are a great way of showing your support for a political candidate or movement, but there has recently been an increase in the number of signs that have been stolen off of people's property. And sure enough, we see this. Uh guy maybe two in a uh you know big ram whatever it was norman police department public information officer sarah jensen says that there has been an increase in sign stealing with this upcoming election 
With the election, you know, we're seeing an increased number of signs start to appear in certain locations. And we are receiving reports that individuals are taking those signs um, off of people's property. Stealing someone's sign off their property is considered petty larceny, but if you are to vandalize the sign by either cutting, tearing, or marking on it, it would be a vandalism charge. Someone does report it and there's potentially video from a doorbell camera or a home camera, and we're able to identify um, individuals we have pursued um, charges and they have signed dockets on those for larceny. While some may consider this a petty theft, the Norman Police Department encourages you to report any signs that have been stolen. A lot of times it can be the first thing that happens, maybe something escalates or it impacts the whole neighborhood. And so being able to know how many times it occurred is beneficial in, in these type of investigations. And while stealing someone's sign may be annoying for some, others are finding a different way to show their support for their candidate. If somebody takes a sign out of your yard, you retaliate by getting another one and or donating money to something you think they would not want you donating money to. I mean, that's pretty common. So, okay. And hopefully those election signs stay put for now. The Roughnecks are taking a break from cheering on OU's football team to help out seniors in the community. The Spirit organization posted on their social media pages they are going to help clear trees for senior citizens and those who cannot afford help. The Roughneck president says he has previous experience from the ice storm in 2007 and was inspired by the memory of his peers stepping up during that time. The Roughnecks and Little Sis will be helping out until Monday, and you can look up their contact information through their Facebook page. And if you plan to break out the chainsaw to help clean up fallen branches, listen up. Make sure you are taking the proper safety measures before you start cutting away. Chainsaw service shops are backlogged due to the sudden increase in demand. They say it could take several days to repair saws and up to 48 hours for chain sharpening. Metro Turf and Norman says they are nearly sold out of both chainsaws and generators. They warn crews to remember safety measures when operating a chainsaw. They also advise never lifting a chainsaw above your head you're reviewing your saw's owner manual before use. And looking outside today, you would not believe we were hit with an ice storm just days ago. Colton, are these fall temperatures here to stay or will we need to break out our coats anytime soon? Yeah, guys, we've had, a, uh, we've had an interesting weather pattern in the last couple of days and I will say that those images of uh, trees down and ice damage are not just confined to Norman folks. We've got images from all over the state of Oklahoma of people who have been hit by this ice storm. We've got one here submitted uh, by Tim Burrow from Prego, from Prego, Oklahoma. Ice falling off the stop sign there. This basketball goal completely covered in ice. And then this one here I took just this morning at the National Weather Center here in Norman. So the bottom line is the whole state was affected by this system that came through. And you can see that by taking a look at our precip accumulation, accumulation across the state over an inch and a half in the panhandle, but as we move eastward and northeastward across the state, just over five inches accumulated. That counts rain and ice here all across the state of Oklahoma. Everybody got a decent amount, and that's not too bad. That did help us knock out the drought, but over the last five days here in Norman, once again, over five inches of rain. So today we're sitting quite a bit warmer than we were at this time yesterday, about 20 degrees here in Norman, 24 in Elk City, but that's very noticeable outside. You get outside today, it's not as miserable as it was on yesterday, but the bad news is still just over 230,000 people without power across the state, but got a milder power coming up in our Halloween forecast all coming up in the full forecast. Thanks Colton and there's just a few days left until Election Day. President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden are both holding rallies today in Florida. Plus straight ahead on OU Nightly, the deadliest trip wreck of 2020. Welcome back to OU Nightly. Oklahoma continues to see a strong rise in the number of COVID cases. Today, the Oklahoma State Health Department reports 1,041 new cases for a total of just under 15,000 active cases in the state. There are also 20 new deaths reported in Oklahoma today, bringing the death toll to 1,306. And President Trump and Vice President Biden are both campaigning in a crucial swing state. Shannon Earhart has that story and the rest of today's headlines from around the world. 
Thanks, guys. President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden are in Florida today. Both are attempting to persuade swing voters in the last days leading up to the election. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has been an avid promo promoter to slow down COVID-19 testing, with the state already one month into operating fully open bars and restaurants. President Donald Trump's rally was at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time in Tampa, and Democratic candidate Joe Biden will hold his rally in Tampa at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And this morning in France, a knife attack left three dead at the Notre Dame Basilica. France President Macron plans to deploy 4,000 military personnel to heighten security at schools in places of worship. The attacker entered the city of Nice, stabbing one victim to death and cutting the throat of the second. A third person managed to flee the church but died of wounds moments after the escape. Police shot the attacker but didn't kill him. The suspect, Brahim Awisaiwi, was shot by police and has been taken into custody. President Macron said that France itself has come under attack. This is the third terror attack this month. At least 140 migrants drowned off the coast of Senegal in Africa. The destination was Spain's Canary Islands, but the boat caught fire a few hours after departing from Umber, later capsizing near the northwest coast of St. Louis. The vessel was carrying around 200 people. 59 were rescued and the remains of 20 were found by nearby fishermen. This is the deadliest wreck of 2020 and follows four wrecks last week recorded in that central Mediterranean. Well, that's all for me. Back to you guys. Thanks, Shannon. And this sunny weather beats the ice and rain that we started the week with. <laughs> yes, Colton, what can you tell us about this weekend's weather? Yeah, guys, we've had uh, we've it's ice has melted now. The sun is out, and we're looking forward to some nicer temperatures as we as we go ahead. All right, welcome back to OU Nightly. Thanks for joining us. I'm Colton Williams. We're taking a live look now at downtown Oklahoma City. Hey, it looks much different than it did out there yesterday. Uh, we can actually see the blue sky. No clouds and the sun is out and it feels really good outside now sitting at 54 degrees sunny. Winds out of the north a little bit breezy, but the dew point is down. We're a lot drier than we have been the last couple of days. Overnight tonight statewide, we won't get to freezing here in Norman, but our neighbors to north in Oklahoma City will all across the state. We'll be in the upper 20s, lower 30s. We're a little bit below average, but we're still recouping from that winter system we had come through. Low, highs tomorrow statewide, 63 here in Norman. Oklahoma City probably won't reach 60 up at Guyman. They're still dealing with a little bit cooler temperatures. And once again, we're a little bit unseasonably cool, but all in all, we're feeling like fall here in Oklahoma. And so once again, sunny across the state tomorrow. So that'll feel good. Getting out the door tomorrow morning, you'll probably want maybe the heavier jacket. But then as you go throughout lunchtime and into the evening, you'll hit 60 somewhere in between here. Winds out of the north tomorrow. Once again, sunny all day long. But hey, coming up on Saturday, it's time for Halloween. Halloween actually looks pretty mild. 54 if you're trick-or-treating as late as 8 o'clock and all the way into the evening hours. Just going to fall down to middle 40s for Halloween. Winds will shift from the west to the north, but all in all, be a partly cloudy evening. It'll be a pretty good evening to get out and do some trick-or-treating. Tomorrow, 63 here in central Oklahoma as we head once again towards Halloween, 65 on Saturday. Don't forget, turn those clocks back heading into Sunday one hour. We're going to lose one hour. And we've got plenty of 60s, an upper 60 on Tuesday. And as we head once again into the rest of the week, we've got some 70s coming up back into next week. That's all for now. Back to you guys. And I'm all about those 70 degree temperatures, but OU football is spending their Halloween weekend in Lubbock. Sydney Bollier joins us with a, lo a look at Sooner Sports. That's right, and men's golf just got back from a big tournament. We'll tell you how they did when we come back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Sydney Bollier, and let's talk some sports. Well, us students had a few days off due to some ice storms, but the football team stayed locked in. This week, Lincoln and the boys are heading down to Lubbock for a spooky 7 p.m. Halloween kickoff against Texas Tech. Wide receiver M Marvin Mims was named Big 12 Newcomer of the Week alongside Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week after his explosive play against TCU. Let's see what QB Spencer Rattler is expecting from the standout freshman in the future. When Marvin came in, uh, we knew he'd be a special, special guy for us. Um, just that relationship grew just throughout, you know, our, I guess we could say our one or two spring practices and then throughout our OTAs and fall camp. But um, yeah, he's a great player. And OU men's golf finished second at the East Lake Cup in Atlanta. The Sooners fell 4-1 to one in the match play final against champion Pepperdine. 
grad transfer Jonathan Brightwell was the only OU player to win his match. On Tuesday, Patrick Welch out teammate Quade Cummins for the individual title. And every day is another day closer to basketball. OU women's basketball, that is. Coach Sherry Cole gave us a little preview of our women's hoop squad as they approach a season that is ever-changing by the COVID-19 pandemic. They've done a great job of just being unflappable. Somebody has to go into contact tracing, they go and we move on. If that means our numbers are low, that just means our numbers are low. And we go three on three instead of five on five. We've just figured out how to roll through and do that. And I'm super proud of our kids. They have just really accepted the challenge of that. World Series just ended, but we've still got some baseball updates for you. The White Sox just announced today that they are bringing aboard Hall of Famer Tony La Russa as their new manager. La Russa is 76 and back with the White Sox after ironically being fired by them 34 years ago. And finally, he's the, he's the gift that keeps on giving. Check out Rob Gronkowski yesterday on catching back shoulder fade passes from TV12. It's like a say my mom used to say, uh, it must be maple syrup because uh, butter don't drizzle like that. Uh, and <laughs> so that's kind of that's kind of how it goes. What exactly is your mom trying to say about you? Is she likening you to butter and Tom to maple syrup? or You got to just take it how it sounds uh, sometimes. But uh, just a little quick roundup is that, you know, you don't got much time to react. Uh, and and syrup drizzles. You got to, I mean, yeah, syrup drizzles. You got to make that play. Uh, and, and a stick of butter, it's a block. You got to put it in the microwave mm -hmm. to melt it. That just takes too long. You got to make that play right away, baby. And, and that's why, you know, that's why I'm like the maple syrup. That, that's why she used to always say that because I'm quick with it. I just drizzle all over the place. Well, I'm out of time, and all that syrup and butter talk from Gronky has me craving some pancakes. So, Haley and Autumn, I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Sydney, and what an analogy that was. <laughs> really, speaking of food, a food critic switched roles and is now a chef. Find out for who or what straight ahead on OU Nightly. And there's some breaking news coming into our newsroom right now. A fire at the popular driving classic 50s. OU Nightly's Lindsay Gibbs just sent in this report. Autumn Haley, I'm standing outside of Classic 50s, a restaurant on Lindsay Street, which caught fire earlier this afternoon. As you can see in this video, firefighters were here trying to contain the fire, which they did confirm was a grease fire started by an overheated fryer. I spoke to one of the managers at Classics who said she tried to put out the fire but couldn't find the source of the flames. No one was hurt and there aren't any significant damages, but they will not be accepting any more customers the rest of the day. As you can see behind me, they did place their cars to block off the entrances. When I spoke with the owner of Classics, she says that she hopes to be up and running by tomorrow morning. Reporting from Lindsay Street, Lindsay Gibbs, OU Nightly. And you can look on our social media for more on this story. And a lot of jobs have changed due to COVID-19, including food critics. Angela Hansberger, a food critic in Georgia, has gone a little nutty by making meals for a furry friend. Hansberger makes elaborate mini meals for a chipmunk that lives by her front porch. Some of the meals include mini rodent ramen bars and a backyard barbecue. Rain or shine, Hansberger always has a table available for one. <laughs> and before we go, Colton is here with one last look at the weather. Colton? Yeah, folks, we've got a pretty mild Halloween evening coming up here, uh, coming up this Saturday. 54 if you're out trick-or-treating. Heading into later into the evening. If you're still out by 10 p.m., 49, the winds are going to shift to the north. And if you so dare to stay out till midnight on Halloween night, well, you might need your little bit of a jacket. I, for one, will be definitely in bed enjoying that extra hour of sleep we're going to get because daylight savings time. We're falling back now coming in uh, to this weekend. Tomorrow, 63 here in central Oklahoma. Saturday, once again, Halloween midday. If you're out midday, it's going to be pretty mild. Middle 60s, we haven't seen that in a while. And once again, lots of sunshine, no rain. We had our fair share over the last couple of days, none now. Once again, Halloween on Saturday. Don't forget to turn your clock back headed into Sunday because Sunday uh, you'll gain that extra hour of sleep, but the sun will begin setting sooner as we head into next week. Temperatures could climb into the upper 60s, lower 70s. Ladies, back to you. 
and I'm excited for that extra hour of sleep on Sunday. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching OU Nightly Live from Gaylord College at the University of Oklahoma. Watch us every day live at 4.30 and again at 9.30. Have a safe Halloween. Good night.